Hi there, Steve King with you once again. So in fact, what is healing? Let's take a look at that. People who are good copers are often referred to as, in fact, being stress hardy. Psychologist Suzanne Cabasa has actually identified three attitudes that sustain such individuals during demanding times. These attitudes are called the three C's, challenge, commitment, and control. A stress-hardy person sees change and crisis as a challenge rather than a threat. Even when they cannot control the outer situation, they realize that they always have control over their response to the things that are happening. There is a wise saying that relates to this phenomenon. Uh, Norman Cousins, the person who said, suffering is inevitable, but misery is optional. Grief is a legitimate feeling for any change or loss. Part of the resolution of the grieving process is in the acceptance and the release of the feeling of anger. Acknowledging that basically anger is just hurt covered up can actually allow us to give ourselves permission to confront it in a healthy way, both physically and emotionally. If a person grew up in an environment whereby anger was not allowed to be expressed, or if it was expressed in such a way that it meant violence, humiliation or ridicule, then it actually becomes understandable why a person might resolve to repress it as a way to actually avoid owning the feeling or putting it aside. Fear of one's anger can result in the energy of that emotion eating away on the inside, tying the stomach in knots, turning to rage and having a person end up in fact being beside himself or herself, i.e. disconnected. If we accept the premise that a higher power provided us with the original ability to feel and express emotions, then we can understand that when something disturbing happens in a healthy family, the appropriate feelings can get healthily expressed. The matter is dealt with and one returns to a state of homeostasis or balance. If, however, uh, unhealthy expression or repression is role modeled for us, then we are thrown out of balance. We will never return to an emotionally healthy status quo, but will go through our lives getting further out of balance and out of touch with our real selves, i.e. disconnected or dispirited. Richard Gerber stated that when the connections between the higher self and the physical personality become interrupted or blocked, egocentrism, alienation and feelings of separation occur. Dr. Norman Carson's wrote that death is not the ultimate tragedy of life. The ultimate tragedy is depersonalization, dying in an alien and sterile uh, area, separated from the spiritual nourishment that comes from being able to reach out to a loving hand, separated from a desire to experience the things that make life worth living, separated from hope. The healing process can begin the moment a person comes out of denial gives oneself permission to challenge a belief system that just hasn't worked and allows oneself to slowly begin a process of owning and safely releasing the legitimate feelings that are connected to past experiences. This allows for the dissipation of repressed energy that has either been internalized and is eating away at the self or has been inappropriately expressed and is negatively impacting one's welfare. I leave an acronym, actually on the board behind me, AGE, uh, that many clients have actually referred to and identified with, as it contains a fairly simple truth. A, abuse imprisons. G, grief releases. And E, expression heals. Healing, then, is a process of shifting our beliefs, thoughts, and actions from that of being our own worst enemy into becoming our own best friend or at least treating ourselves with the same kindly consideration that we would extend to someone we loved unconditionally. I will sometimes state to a client that you are the only person you will never leave or lose in your entire lifetime, so you might as well establish the best possible relationship with yourself. Indeed, congruency and confluence equals mental health. Truly one is in the high-robed harmonious state when living by the golden rule. Childhood or other life experiences can leave a person in a state whereby survival, preservation and dependence are the guiding principles. 
a state of hopelessness and helplessness will often result in what Emerson, Dr. Charles Emerson, termed endogenous depression. Adulthood, however, should be a time of movement towards independence and truly living. Naturally, we do not want this process of change to take a lifetime, even though we may recognize that happiness is in the journey and not a destination. It is because the Callahan technique of thought field therapy or EFT, etc., has provided many of my clients with such healthy shifts in a very brief time period that I wish to further an understanding as well as develop the practice of the same. If we continue to reenact unhealthy behaviors as a result of not resolving our unfinished business, then in essence we need what I have called an emotional enema, which is a very threatening idea if you believe that pain never ends. Bill Moyers used the analogy of emotional open heart surgery for the same concept. Serge King, who is not a relation by the way, uh, states that the Hooners recognize the role of Ku, or the subconscious memory, which resides at the cellular level and does its best to avoid what is painful. The Kahuna's concept of a coup connotes a hidden part of the mind that could also be a reservoir for unresolved conflicts. It is animalistic in the sense that it is directly linked to the functioning of the body and it serves to channel instincts and emotions. However, in the Kahuna view, coup doesn't have to be controlled, only taught or trained. The coup is a reservoir not only of unresolved conflicts, but of all learning and habits, and its instinctive drives have to do with survival, growth, and happiness. All the negative effects produced by the coup are considered as a result of learned behavior and beliefs. We cannot always control what happens to us or around us, but we can learn to change our responses to those things. We can lead a life in pursuit of our own goals, allowing ourselves a gift of being open to pursue our own true potential and returning to a full state of connectedness with our own spirit. Jean Achterberg stated that to lose one's soul eliminates meaning from life, from the soul murder that derives from excessive and persistent shame and guilt can come the rebirth and relationship with the self and the world that offers a sense of real choice and the healthy pursuit of optimum potential and possibilities. Dr. Wayne Dyer has made a significant contribution to the spiritual search that many are journeying on with his book, Your Sacred Self. He speaks to the fears and doubts that continue to stop one's spiritual growth and states that everything you do produces a result. It is what you do with the result that counts. In other words, there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. If a person could accept all of their natural feelings and moods and develop healthy forms of expressing them, then there would be no need for mood-altering substances or processes. The elimination of fears, phobias, addictions, obsessions, compulsions and traumas by dissipating the energy of the resulting and underlying anxiety is what appears to happen as a result of using some of these energy medicine techniques. It is rare that the term cure is used in the field of psychology, but Dr. Roger Callahan does use the term cure and the results of his technique appear to have borne this out, as well as other techniques. There are a number of definitions for the word cure, and they include something that corrects, heals, or permanently alleviates a harmful or troublesome situation, to restore to health, to free from something objectionable or harmful, to rectify an unhealthy or undesirable condition, to relieve or be rid of something troublesome or detrimental, such as illness, a bad habit, etc. I've had numerous clients inform me that their original identified problem issues have not returned and therefore given the elapsed amount of time I believe the energy medicine treatments and techniques can indeed provide a cure. It is also a good idea to remember that we have never walked in another person's shoes and it therefore behooves us to look at the world through another's lens rather than to be restricted by our own limited experience and views. Otherwise, our judgments or reactions become biased and inflexible. It is a therapist or counselor's role to support and guide clients toward their stated goals, and in order to do so effectively, one occasionally needs to suspend one's beliefs in order to work with and support another through their issues and dilemmas. It was Dr. Schweitzer who said, the witch doctor succeeds for the same reason all the rest of us succeed. Each patient carries his own doctor inside. 
they come to us not knowing that truth. We are at our best when we give the doctor who resides within each patient a chance to go to work. The doctor inside that Schweitzer refers to has the benefits of the body's innate wisdom as well as the life experiences and knowledge that has produced the wisdom of the psyche. I will often ask clients to tune in to their independent expert observer part and few ever actually question what it is I'm asking of them, though many may realize that in order to hear that part, they have, may have to emotionally step aside. Some will feel an internal conflict, and this is often the recognition of some form of secondary gain that is to be had by not listening in too deeply to that part, as it may involve some level of discomfort. And as you know, some people are very comfortable in their discomfort. Thanks very much for listening. I'm Steve King.